These are my friends, Emily and Zach. These are their French Bulldogs. And this is their turtle, Dan. Dan is a red-eared slider, the most common pet turtle. They got that name because of the red stripe on their head and because they like to do this. Whenever I visit Emily and Zach, I watch Dan clawing at the sides of his tank. It seems like a sad way to go through life. I imagine taking Dan to Central Park and setting him free. There's already a bunch of turtles there, and they seem to be thriving. I ask Emily what she thinks about this idea. I think setting him free would be good. I'm ready to not be responsible for the turtle. See, Emily and Zach never wanted a pet turtle. They just kind of got stuck with one. I was working on a movie as a production manager. It was about a young father who wanted to connect with his twin girls and he brings them two little turtles. So I had to go and buy in Chinatown these two little turtles, which we used as props. There's Dan, already trying to escape. The shoot lasted like an hour, and then it was like, we're done with the turtles. And then I just owned these turtles. Dan was passed from producer to producer until he landed at Emily's. That was over five years ago. I think the ideal outcome is we find a situation that works for everybody. Right. That the turtle gets to go somewhere else. Right. <laughs> Before setting Dan free in Central Park, I contacted a turtle expert to find out if there's anything I should know. I have a colleague who's a bird person. I know someone else who just does squirrels and opossums, and I do turtles. This is Lori Kramer, a wildlife rehabilitator. For over 35 years, she has cared for injured and abandoned turtles in her Upper West Side apartment. This is Billy Idol. He was run over by a Jeep. Lavinia, for years, didn't know that he was a turtle. He thought he was a cat. I asked Lori what she thinks about my plan to release Dan in Central Park. First, I would tell you that it was illegal to do. But even more important, it's very cruel. Central Park, Turtle Pond, has so many red-eared sliders that there's not enough food in there to feed them. If you put your turtle in the park, there's like a 95% chance your turtle is going to die of starvation, which is a horrible way to die. Hmm, a slow, painful death is not exactly what I had in mind for Dan. But I'm not giving up, he's counting on me. If the park is too crowded, maybe I could release him into the wild. I know a good pond in Connecticut. What's the downside? I think releasing a turtle in the wild is a bad idea because, well, for several reasons. That's turtle expert and buzzkill, Anthony Pierleoni. I've been coming here for roughly five years. And five years ago, the basking sites were full of eastern painted turtles. And now they're full of red ear sliders. Word's gotten out that this is a great place to let your pets go. And people are coming all the time and doing just that. But they're not thinking about all of those side effects, all of those things that happen to the environment when those turtles are released. Red-eared sliders are native to the southeastern U.S. But since they're so profitable to farm, easy to transport and sell, yet difficult to take care of, they've been released all over the world. These are an invasive species, which means a species that are really not native here. And so they have taken over. Sliders are bigger and more aggressive than native turtles, outcompeting them for food and basking territory. They also carry bacteria such as salmonella that native turtles don't have immunity to. Every time somebody releases a red-eared slider, cute little guys like this spotted turtle have less of a chance. We're just scratching the surface as far as what red-eared sliders may do to our own environment uh, and environments across the world. Okay, option C. I'd call around to some wildlife rescue centers to see if they'll take Dan in. But shockingly, nobody has room for red-eared sliders. After running into so many dead ends, I begin to wonder if Dan will be stuck in this tank for the rest of his life. And then one day in April, my wife and I were out for a walk and we happened to stumble on something. How did you end up rescuing turtles? Well, I didn't want to put turtles in here, but people kept coming by and saying they had a turtle in some pathetic little fish tank and they were feeling guilty. So I, I couldn't refuse. And it's okay if we 
Yeah. Bring ours. Yeah. Do you want another one? Yeah. Yeah? Do you have it with you? On a beautiful spring day, two years after I began shooting this project, we are bringing Dan to his new home. My wife Liz has generously agreed to help out. Don't eat anyone, okay? <laughs> have a big pond to swim in. I know, I know. I know, I know. I know. Oh, look at him. He's a little... What do you think, Dano? Look at him. He's keeping his head out. You can walk along with them, Jack. You want to walk out along? It's up to him. Oh, all right. Look at him. He knows what's going on. That's pretty cool. Is Dan okay? I think so. Yeah. You see? Dan is understandably a little cautious about this whole thing. We'll check back later. Seems like things are going well. There's Dan. I'm pretty sure. Anyways, it's a happy ending, not just for one red-eared slider, but for all the native turtles who won't have to compete with him for food and territory. Just something to think about if you're considering a pet turtle. Those little guys at the market might be cheap, but they come with a lot of hidden costs, and there's already so many turtles who need homes. Always adopt is wildlife centers. There are rescue groups and wildlife rehabilitators like myself that get animals that are not releasable and they need homes, and they need TLC, and they need love. I find with the animals that I've rescued, they appreciate it. 